Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the 20th lesson on meteorology. Uh, we're going to get into some really practical stuff uh, now. Actually, the last few lessons have been pretty practical, but we'd like to tie it all together uh, and discuss some weather interpretation. This isn't in the study and reference guide, but hopefully it will just solidify uh, the things that you've learned in the last few lessons. So in the next three lessons, uh, we're going to go through three complete weather packages and just explain how the weather system moves and get you used to the different products available. So here's the first uh, weather package. I'd like you to go online and uh, on freepilotgroundschool.ca and download uh, the weather package one. And this is what it is. It's a big 11 by 17 PDF. If you have the, the opportunity, I'd encourage you to print it out in color. Uh, you can get that done at uh, Staples or, or a printing shop. And uh, it's probably easier to follow along if uh, if you do that. So here's how I laid this out. So on February 23rd, I downloaded a bunch of uh, GFAs, METARs, and TAFs uh, for different regions. This one is for British Columbia. I also downloaded a weather a radar shot that we can discuss as well. And uh, you can see in the top, uh, th so these were taken at Midnight Zulu. So the top one, Midnight Zulu, and then the one on at 12 Zulu is the subsequent uh, clouds and weather GFA. And then the one at Midnight Zulu on the 24th, the 24 hours later, is the one that was uh, forecast at that time. However, what I did uh, for the icing and turbulence chart, so that's the, the bottom one, the bottom GFA, is I took it for the same time. So the one from the top and the bottom are uh, the same time. However, it was the forecast from 12 hours earlier. So you can compare what they were forecasting 12 hours earlier with what they decided to forecast for what was going to happen within the next half an hour, let's just say. Uh, so the, the one where the validity period and the effective time are the same. So we're going to go through these. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit on the different ones. And, uh, and then we'll just uh, work our way through it. So let's begin by looking at the GFA from the 23rd at midnight Zulu. So the clouds and weather are gonna be on the left and on the right is uh, the clouds, or sorry, the uh, icing turbulence and freezing level GFA taken for the same validity period, but issued 12 hours earlier on the 22nd at 12 Zulu. So let's begin. This is British Columbia. Hopefully you're somewhat familiar with British Columbia. I did put arrows in where the uh, where the actual weather stations are. Should you not know where, let's say, Terrace is or Prince George, hopefully that'll become a bit uh, clearer to you. So let's begin uh, by looking at the GFA portion. So if we look on the left side, we see this frontal depression here. Here's this low um, the it's moving to the east at 25 knots the low is as is this uh, occlusion right here or trowel we have a cold front uh, catching up to a warm front so if we were to look at this right here um, okay so just try to think about how this would look like from the side okay so we would have a warm front okay and then i'm going to draw the ground here this is just how it looks like and then here will be the the uh, cold front. Okay, this would be uh, warm air right here, warm air, and then this would be cool air. We'll just call it cool. Then this will be cold air right over here. Okay, so the cold air is catching up to the warm air, and so that that's how this would look like if we draw this cross section right here. You can notice the isobars are quite close together, so you're going to have strong winds. And uh, if we look at the GFA here uh, in this region right here, okay, we can take a look. And uh, it says it's broken with the bases at 8,000 feet, tops at 20,000, remember it's ASL, and then there's a second layer broken at 2,000, tops at 4,000. There's intermittent visibilities, three to uh, six statute miles in light rain and mist. Isolated alto cumulus castellanus tops at 22,000. So because it's after the cloud, it means it's the top. Two statue miles in light rain showers and mist. There's patchy ceilings, 800 
to 1500 feet AGL. Now let's move over uh, in this region right here. Um, I'll do purple because we haven't seen purple here. Okay. So this region right here is the Vancouver area. It says it's broken, they're forecasting broken with bases between two and 4,000 feet ASL, 7,000 feet are the tops plus six statue miles and patchy sea lines, 1500 AGL. Local uh, five miles in light rain and mist, sea lines at 800. So let's compare that to what the actual METAR said. So this was what they were forecasting at midnight Zulu. So it came out half, it, it was released half an hour prior, 23.30 on the 22nd. Midnight Zulu, that's what they're forecasting. And then what was the actual weather in Vancouver? So if we take a look here, I'm 23 at midnight Zulu, Vancouver, winds 305 knots. So that makes sense because look at the isobar. Uh, they're pretty far apart right here. 30 miles, few at 2,000 feet, scattered at 4,800, scattered at 17,000, broken at 19,000, temperature 8, 2.4, altimeters 3014. So there's no ceiling there. But it said it was Apache ceiling, but they were forecasting that there was a broken layer between 2,000 and 4,000. So in this case, we would that would probably be this few. So it wasn't actually a ceiling. It ended up being better weather than what they were forecasting. If we look over here at Kelowna, uh, we look and uh, here, so Kelowna would be like right there. I think that's Kelowna right there. So if we look at this area right here, okay. So that area right there, uh, they were calling broken bases at 6,000 tops of 10,000, uh, then towering cumulus, light rain showers. So uh, the actual weather at that time, though, is light winds, nine statue miles, overcast at 9,000 feet. So they were calling broken uh, between six and 10,000, so 9,000 feet. That's, uh, that's quite reasonable. There's also an A there. So let's look at what the A says. A, remember, on the comments over here. Okay. So this is eastern northern sections and above 3,000 feet precipitation, two to six statue miles, light snow showers. So we're in the mountains here. So they're just saying in this area, just be aware that it might be bad weather um, up, up in higher areas in the mountains. Let's move across here to Calgary. Okay. Calgary looks like it's pretty good weather here. And uh, however, you can see here in Calgary, it's actually, uh, if we look at the METAR over here, Calgary, Midnight Zulu, we have light snow showers, few at 2,000 feet. So even though Calgary uh, looks like it's clear right here, it appears that it has been influenced by this weather system. Okay, see this weather system, which is this weather in Kelowna. So what that tells us is that this weather here um, where they're saying that there's light snow showers and mist, ceilings of 1,500 feet, and towering cumulus. So that's actually moved faster than they were forecasting. So that would be why a Kelowna has better weather than it was forecast, because there's no snow showers in Kelowna and the ceilings are higher. So that whole cloud system is now over Calgary, actually it moved faster than they were forecasting. And Kelowna is kind of behind it now, and Kelowna is in the clear. Okay, let's move up north to uh, Prince George, YXS up here. So if we look at the GFA in the area, uh, they're calling scattered at bases at 7,000, tops at 9,000. So it's it's nice weather there, plus six statute miles visibility. And then if we look up here, so it's gusty winds, uh, 210, 11 gusts, 16, nine statute miles. So that's better than six. And then broken at 7,000 feet. So that's pretty much exactly what they're forecasting. It's broken at 7,000 feet. Now, mind you, that's AGL, remember, and the uh, the uh, GFA says ASL, but it's still uh, kind of within that same ballpark. So that uh, that forecast looks reasonably good. And then let's go to the top here. Uh, look at Terra BC, YXT. It's on the pretty much on the coast or just inland of the coast, uh, the west coast of British Columbia. And we look at B. So there's clouds and weather there. Let's look at B says. So remember B over here. Okay, and we'll look at that. So they're calling bases at three to 5,000 feet ASL, broken tops at 8,000 plus six at your mile. Frequent towering cumulus tops at 10,000 feet, three quarters to five miles and light snow showers and mist patchy ceilings, five to 1200 AGL. And uh, so that's kind of miserable there. And uh, we look at it and here it actually says 
15 miles, few at 800, broken at 4,000. So that's actually quite a bit different. So uh, there could be a number of reasons for it. That system uh, seems to be more uh, typical of what you would see in Prince George here uh, than it does here. So my guess is this system may not have moved fast as fast as they were anticipating. So it's not quite there yet, but we'll see what happens uh, in 12 hours. So let's look on the right, clouds and, uh, or sorry, uh, freezing level and turbulence, icing freezing level and turbulence GFA. So this is what they were forecasting uh, on the right here. I'll just underline it. This is what they were forecasting 12 hours earlier. So you can see if we look here at this low and the uh, the front, so 12 hours earlier, they were forecasting that this front would be considerably, this frontal system here would be considerably more uh, rotated. So kind of it rotated a bit quicker. And then by the time they got to the, the validity period of Midnight Zulu, it was, uh, it, it's kind of more steep. If you look here, notice how it's not as, um, it's more vertical here than, than it is on the uh, icing GFA. But we can look over here. At this time, they were forecasting, if we look here. Okay, so patchy, uh, they were looking at patchy moderate turbulence from the surface to 3,000 feet AGL and mechanical low level winds. And that's caused by uh, the winds. Uh, so that would be if we look at Prince George, for example, remember it's gusting 16 knots, it's in the mountains, it's going to cause quite a bit of turbulence. And uh, if we look at freezing levels here, it's mostly at the surface, so along that line freezing level is going to be at the surface. Let's look at the TAF over here for Vancouver. So I just gave one example. So uh, between midnight and 06 Zulu, they're calling 310 at eight knots plus six miles, scattered at 2000, broken at 18,000. So that's pretty much what the METAR over here uh, indicated. So we'll see how that develops as the time progresses. We can also look down here at the weather radar at midnight Zulu, see how it says 12 Zulu here. And uh, so this covers just Vancouver, uh, or sorry, British Columbia area, lower British Columbia, and then also covers uh, Alberta. But we won't pay attention to Alberta because it's kind of outside of the GFA region. So we might not get uh, the full uh, clouds and weather um, impact of the clouds and weather. Uh, so if we look at 12 Zulu, yeah, there's not much. There's a bit of precipitation right down here. Okay. And uh, that's basically what uh, we see outside of Vancouver, but it's off the coast. But it's pretty much clear here. There's not, uh, there's not uh, too, much, uh, too much snow uh, going on here, a little bit up north of Prince George. If we look up here, which makes sense with this weather up here, where it's just light snow showers, but not really heavy returns. Like you might see in a, in a, in a strong and strong precipitation. So let's move on to the next uh, slide and see how this weather system has progressed. So here we are 12 hours later, February 23rd at 12 Zulu. This, uh, the clouds and weather. So this was issued at 11.31 at 12.30. So this is, they, they came up with this forecast for something that's going to happen in half an hour and, and lasting half an hour for another 12 hours. So now we can see that this frontal system is completely uh, over Vancouver at this time. And this is really important to notice. And remember here how we said that this cold front is catching up to the warm front and that we have this occlusion and you end up with just absolutely miserable weather. So let's look over, uh, we'll start on the left side here uh, with this low, the low pressure, I believe uh, is 991 hectopascals. The weather in that area in the clouds and weather area there is uh, overcast. So if we look over here, okay. So we'll look at this box here. It's overcast two to 4,000 feet ASL, tops at 24,000. So that's a solid layer of cloud. It's pretty thick. And uh, the visibility three miles in light rain, mist, occasional to cumulus castellanus topping at 22,000. One statue miles in light snow, uh, rain showers, mist, patchy ceilings five to 1,500 feet. That's uh, up here, we should notice, so on the north coast of the Queen Charlotte's. And then right here, we'll look at this area. So I'm just going to circle this to make your life easy. Uh, overcast at 2,000 feet, tops at 7,000 plus six statue miles. Frequent uh, tyrant cumulus, tops at 16,000 feet. 
three to six statue miles, light rain, showers, and mist. So again, like I said, to occlusion, miserable weather. You have strong winds. You have towering cumulus. So, I mean, you could get thunderstorms potentially. Let's say this was the summer. You get thunderstorms. But then you also have rain, showers, and mist. So uh, kind of warm front weather. Absolutely miserable. Now let's look here. Let's look at, this is Vancouver, what the actual weather is in Vancouver. And we can see Vancouver, if we just follow the arrows, going to be right there. So this is right after the warm front went through. The wind 08012 gust 19, so gusty winds, 10 miles in heavy rain, broken 1,500 feet, and overcast of 2,000. So that uh, that is quite miserable. They're also saying, they're also forecasting here, if we look right here, in the vicinity of the cold front, isolating cumulonimbus tops to 28,000, two miles in thunderstorms and mist. Absolutely miserable day. However, if we start looking at the clouds and weather for Kelowna, which I believe is here, Kelowna actually might be here. I, I can't quite, it might be the, the farther one to the north. But if we look, at this weather here where it says so it's talking about uh, broken layers uh, at bases 4,000 to 6,000 plus six statue miles with the occasional ultra cumulus castle wind. compare that to the Metar with Kelowna right here we have light winds broken at 5,500 feet AGL above ground level so Kelowna I think is about 1,500 feet so about 7,000 feet so that makes sense um, it, the, the ceiling is about what was forecast on the GFA and uh, temperature zero minus uh, and the two point is minus three. We'll look at Calgary. Now Calgary is outside of the um, of this region so you won't they won't display uh, all the weather that's there. Uh, it's mostly blank but it is uh, 15 miles broken at 12,000 feet which is quite nice. Let's go north Prince George is here it's kind of central bc they're calling clear weather and you can see on uh on this right here there so it's clear in prince george and uh the but they're forecasting bases at twelve thousand, tops at twenty thousand. so uh something interesting here because this is an auto station you see it's an auto clear sometimes it will come back as clear instead of sky clear so when you see skc that's the actual sky is clear, but CLR uh, is just the auto station doesn't detect any any ceiling. Uh, so this, there could still be ceiling way high up, but it, it's not going to detect anything. If we go to Terrace on the coast, okay, it's gusty winds to 23 knots. Notice how close these isobars are together, okay, and wind 010 at, at 14 gusts 23. So. Um, that that's caused by the strong uh, pressure gradient there uh here remember this is an upper cold front right here with the hollow markings okay and then an upper warm front okay so i'll just draw it out so remember let's say we have the ground i'm just going to draw it out up top here we have the ground and then we have an upper um warm front might be like so so an upper warm front would look like. So it's a, a, a layer of uh, warm air and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, and then the front kind of sits on top of uh, of the layer of uh, of cold air. If we look to the right on the icing, turbulence, and freezing level chart, uh, we can see the frontal system right here, and uh, it. It says in the coastal sections, it says moderate turbulence. So that's going to be right here. This area, moderate turbulence and occasional severe turbulence. And that's caused by that strong wind associated with that low. Okay. So we have, and then up here, we have mixed icing from the freezing level to tops at 12,000 feet. So if you're flying IFR, and you had to get on top, you want to get out of the ice, and you have to get to 12,000 feet. So that should kind of stick out in your mind that you need an airplane that's going to perform and get to 12,000 feet in icing conditions. So you're flying wrong, let's say you're hyperdiving with 8,000 feet. To get to 12,000, well, you do need oxygen on board. That airplane might not climb to 12, want to even climb to 12,000 feet with ice on it. So if you're flying in this weather, not only are your own capabilities 
uh, going to be tested. But you also need to consider what kind of aircraft you have. So for me, if I was uh, flying this weather, I'd want at least a, a, a good turboprop, uh, let's just say like a, a Beach King Air or something like that, that I know is going to, it's pressurized, I know it's going to get out of the icing above 12,000 feet. I don't want to get stuck uh, in the mountains, being unable to climb, unable to maintain altitude because of the icing conditions. So you, you also have to think about what kind of uh, equipment that you're flying. If we look at the bottom here, here's this, here now this weather shows up on the radar. So we have, uh, that corresponds with about 30 dBZ. Uh, that is the, the weather uh, rate of return, that's that's a pretty strong return. Uh, 30 dBZ is a lot. Um, and that's associated with all that uh, precipitation here that you see the heavy rain in Vancouver. So that concludes uh, this lesson on weather interpretation. I hope that you learned something about this and you're following along and that this isn't too overwhelming for you, uh, but get Go online, go on flightplanning.navcanada.ca, download, especially when you see um, a strong weather system in your area, download uh, a weather package and just follow along, see if you can interpret everything and figure out what's going on. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next uh, weather interpretation lesson where we're going to look at a weather system from a different region.